Alright, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Holmes Hobbies Motor Control. It's your boy Josh, aka Coleman. And uh, sorry, it's dark. I'm in my living room right now. I just got back from the hobby shop. I had to run over and get some uh, styrene and stuff like that. Ooh, that was a bright one. And uh, just some more parts for Project Hercules, because I've been working on Hercules pretty hardcore. And uh, we're just shutting everything up, so it's not like a glass box. Even though I technically live in a glass box, everybody sees everything I do every day anyways. I uh, went over to the hobby shop, get some parts, and then, uh, yeah, now I'm... Do I got everything? Oh, I'm bring my phone and all that stuff. Uh, I'm just kind of doing a laid-back episode today. We are actually going to take a look at the Holmes Hobby Servo today. Um... We're just going to install one. Figure why not. Let's head back into the shop here. A little studio. And oh, I'm freezing right now. It's kind of cold. It's a beautiful day, but it is cold right now. Alright. Here we are. And I'm just going to let you know right off the bat, my shop is a mess, man. Look at this. Boom. I've got stuff just everywhere. Because I have been wrenching on stuff like crazy. And I'm not even going to show you right now. Hercules is sitting up there, and it is looking awesome, man. Um, but I was uh, basically, um, I was doing what I always do, trying to come up with an idea for the episode. And I was hoping to get a box in the mail before this episode came, but um, I had a feeling it might not show up in time because we were kind of pushing it on time. So I had a backup plan, and what we're going to do is we are going to go a little more in-depth on this. The... Holmes Hobbies with a HV500 servo. All right, this is an awesome little servo. Um, I recently installed one in Hercules, and you know what? I just realized my lens cap is not all the way open. There we go. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. All right, so. I recently installed one inside of uh, Hercules, which you guys will eventually get to see how that functions in there too. But um, since I can't show you that truck yet until we get to that point in the build episodes, I decided what I'm going to do is, uh, look at that, I got some monster eyebrows. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to install this into one of my other trucks. And that got me thinking, well, how about we just designate a truck as a, uh, you know, Holmes Hobbies test vehicle, something we can just install things into here for fun. So, looking at all these trucks here, I was pretty excited. I was going to work on this one um, because I actually blew the servo on this, so I was like, oh, that's a perfect one to install in that. But then I realized, you know what, this thing sees a lot of water and abuse, and I'm just going to leave the cheapo servo in there for now because I guarantee I'm going to break it again. Um, once I get some more Holmes Hobby servo, Holmes Hobby servos, then I'll throw another one in there. But this guy, however, this is a better base. Reason being, this is basically a bone stock axial SCX10. You can see even the front steering link is plastic. I mean, it is bone stock. The only thing that is different is it's got 1.55 uh, wheels and tires on it from RC4 Wheel Drive. It has an extended wheel base. So it can fit this hard body that I put on it, and it has a bumper, and that's really it. I mean, it's still running stock links in the front. I mean, it's all stock plastic links in the front, stock transmission, stock uh, gears, stock everything. All stock layout. The only thing that's changed is the lower rear links, um, and yeah, you know, just whatever it took for me to get that body on there. So, this will be... The truck we use. So we're gonna take this, we're gonna sit over here. This is a Jeep that I called the Sarge and I basically built this based around the uh, uh, Jeep J8 mil spec vehicle. Let's pull a little army dude out of there. Obviously having fun with that. And yeah, we're going to just go ahead and install servo on this. So it should be fun. Alright, first things first, let me get the radio, all that stuff sorted, make sure it's ready to go, and we'll get this underway. Okay, so, finally uh, found the radio for it. I forgot that I swapped it over to this little RC4-wheel drive radio. 
and uh, all that ticking you hear and beeping and stuff is that right there. It's got the stock ESC in it, but I also have this light strobe thing in there for those lights. It kind of ticks. Um, the battery isn't in there. It's actually right here. So it's just a Next Level 3S pack I got from CKRCHobbies.com. I use this in a lot of my trucks. I'm going to use that for this little test. So first thing we're going to do is get this over here like so. And we're going to turn the wheels. Now, I cannot remember if this has a BEC or not. I'm not going to lie. I don't think it does, though. I'm pretty sure it does not. Uh, as far as this goes, this is... I, I don't really know. You know, just for the sake of figuring it out, we're going to scratch this off. And see if we can see what kind of servo this is. That's 645 MG. Alright, so, high tech 645, pretty standard servo, alright, for those of you guys that don't like to read sideways, there you go, alright, so, I'm going to pull this off, so I'm not going to do this like a <clears throat> regular how-to video or nothing like that, I'm just going to crack into this bad boy. I've got these cool little mounts on here like this. They actually tie into the shock hoops. Oh, let's see if I can do this with the camera still in my hand. I have to push it against this. Alright, got one side loose. Switch this around now like so. Get the other side. Loose. She's loose. So it's just those two screws. It's one on each side there, and then I got this funky little bracket thing in the back. Pops loose just like that. You guys see that there? And uh, I gotta be careful not to pull this out. It's got a lot of slack, so I should be able to set it up fairly high. Now, need something to prop that up. Let's use. Let's use this. There we go. And there we have it. Now I can access everything with it still turned on and all that. So, let's see. How are we going to do this? Oh man. What a bummer. I don't even want to go through all these wires. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm just going to cut it and resolder it, obviously. Because I don't want to deal with all that. So, yeah, let's, uh, yeah, I'll be right back. Okay, so what I decided to do instead of uh, just cutting that and soldering another one on like I obviously did before, I am going to take this right here and I'm going to solder an adapter on the end of this so that I can just plug this servo in. And then if I ever need to pull it out to put in something else, it's just a quick release. I can just pull it out. Pull the servo out, plug it into something else, and put it right back in, and it only takes me seconds. Something I've been doing on some of my other trucks lately. Uh, just very convenient. So there's a tip for people out there. When you're building your trucks, have leads coming out of your receiver box. Um, this right here is a great example of what not to have. This is a wiring mess, a nightmare, and this is from back when I was, uh, I didn't really care too much. <laughs> I care a lot more now, so yeah, don't don't do that if you can get away with it. All right, let's see. Uh, on to the next step. All right, so the next step, I got this buried a little bit, at least the outer part of the uh, heat shrink. Now we're gonna cut this old nasty heat shrink. Actually, we're just gonna cut it like right here. Don't worry, I disconnected the battery. <laughs> Always disconnect your battery before doing this. All right, so now. I'm going to get those spliced out, tinned and ready, and then I will attach this. Then we'll pull that old servo out and put the new one in. Alright, so I've got this lead all installed here, this female piece, so now I can just plug a servo into that whenever I want.
makes it a lot easier to install and uninstall servos when you've got your ESC tucked away in a box like that. So now I've got this janky wire hanging off here attached to the servo. We're going to go ahead and remove this, which it's bone stock setup. It's just the four Phillips head screws in there, so it shouldn't take long. Well, I guess plus the center one there. Alright, so taking the last screw out here, this is the one that holds the servo horn on, and it should be this, oh, there it goes, and I just put it in here, I always use my old cow RC mats here, and I got a little helper today. Oh, no, nobody, I'm talking about you, Jelly. Say hi, Jelly. That's my, that's my little lady. Yeah, she helps me out all the time. She is an American Pit Bull Terrier that I rescued while living in Hawaii. And, uh, yeah, she's one of my good friends. She's always hanging out with me. She wakes me up every morning. Because those phones you just heard going off don't ever wake me up. Alright, there we go. It finally came off. So now it should just slide out. And there we go. Boom. So now the old one's out, let's uh, get the new servo ready. Alright, so here we have it, let's let this thing focus a little bit. Uh, if you guys missed the beginning of the video, like I said, this is the Holmes Hobbies HV500 servo. This is a brushless high torque servo. This is a high voltage servo, but also high torque uh, for you guys that need some specs. Go ahead and read up there. I did do a video on this before, but I might as well show you guys this again. So, we're going to go ahead and crack this bad boy open and get this installed. I really like this servo. It's super quiet and uh, super powerful. Alright, so there we go. Once you take the uh, top off there, this is what it looks like inside. As you can see, nice case, nice packaging. The uh, goodies are underneath down there. Servo horn and all that. Okay, so I've got it in place and I went ahead and zip tied the uh, lead up properly, but I don't want to use the old screws. So, what we're going to do is come over here and I have uh, in here, this is my little travel box I use when I go to Axial Fest and stuff like that. I have my Team KK hardware. The, uh, make a bad black kit. So we're going to use some screws out of this. We'll go ahead and put some Team k, &K hardware in this piece. Alright, so as you can see, lights back on, flashing, all that stuff. It's beeping at me and uh, that is because we are done. We've got it all installed here. You can see the wiring. I've got it nice and neat here. Tucked up. Plugs in right here. Now that we have the lead coming out of there, makes it really easy. The reason I have all this in there is because of the light kit. It's hideous, I know, but it works. And now, we still have stock link down here. It's really, really nasty. But, we have the Holmes Hobbies Servo. Holmes Hobbies Servo installed. So, let's see how it does. As you can see on here, well, here. Response wise. Pretty nice. There's a lot of grip on this, so I'm impressed. Most things struggle when I put them on the surface, so this is nice. Most of my trucks are pretty heavy, too. This one's not that heavy. It's probably about, I don't know, I'm thinking like 7 to 8 pounds. Not that heavy at all. But yeah, yeah. Really nice. So, let's give it a little test real quick. I have some rocks around the corner on the floor. We'll try it out. Alright, took the top off. Take a little weight off the top that way because this thing does not do very good. It has no weight in tires or down low at all. So has plastic links even. So we're gonna come over here. Sorry guys, it's gonna be dark. And uh we're just gonna do a quick test on my little rock pile here. I literally have rocks piled up on the steps next to the washer and dryer. That's just how I get down, guys. But perfect place for me to hang out and test parts so when it's cold outside I come in here and I test parts 
Let's see if we can make it up. Stock suspension, bone stock gearing, bone stock electronics, bone stock everything. I haven't changed nothing. Oh, I take that back. I changed the uh, spur gear out and the pinion gear out to a little bit lower spur and pinion. Struggling for a uh, weak servo link. That's okay. Power our way through. Oh, that's high centered. Looks like it's gonna work for me. Um, I won't lie, I'm gonna need a BEC right away. Definitely gonna need a BEC, and I'm definitely gonna need some uh, steering links. Definitely gonna need, let's see, BEC, some steering links, and uh, let's see, probably some stronger steering knuckles. This is a budget build. I'm trying to do a budget hard body build with this one, but yeah, there we go. There we have it, you guys. That is the uh, Holmes Hobbies Holmes Hobbies HB500 servo in the house. And one more time for you guys. Boom, here it is. For those of you that are wanting to look this up for yourselves, there you have it. The HB500. This thing is awesome. And uh, if you up the voltage on it, it'll be even better. Uh, that little test right there. <clears throat> <coughs> Whew, excuse me. Uh, that little test right there was stock electronics. Um, I'm running a 3S on a AE2 or AE3, whatever is in there, stock from the factory. And um, no BEC. So, yeah, that's about, what, 6 volts is what they put out, I think. Um, so, yeah, that's not bad on 6 volts. So, yeah, there we have it. <laughs> you guys will see it in Hercules. I actually have one in Hercules that is on a BEC that's turned up a little bit. Um, you guys will be able to see that uh, in action here real shortly, actually. I have some awesome videos coming up of Hercules. So anyways, you guys, that's probably it for today. I'm going to uh, hop off here and go eat some biscuits and gravy for dinner. My wife is awesome. She made me breakfast for dinner tonight. All right, you guys, you know what it is. Peace and chicken grease. I'll see you on the next episode.